How many people know who Kwame Brown is? Know who Kwame Brown is? Some people call him a bust. How can you be a bust when you were number one draft pick? <laughs> I wish I was a bust was the number one anything pick and anything. You know what I'm saying? How is that a bust? A guy made multiple millions of dollars, several million dollars playing in the NBA, professional. You know how rare it is to play NBA ball? He played NBA ball for, what, 13 years, 14 years, something like that? And that's a failure? And I admire Kwame Brown because he's like a breath of fresh air because he speaks his mind. Now, I don't agree with his politics too much. Too friendly with the Trumpers. Jumping off one plantation to another one, that ain't going to solve your problem. But here's the reason why I'm talking about him tonight. I'm talking about Kwame Brown because he said something I got to correct. And I, and I want to correct this in love, okay? I used to think this way, okay? The same way he's thinking, I used to think this way. And it was worse for me because I was older when I was still thinking this way. Kwame thinks black people and white people are basically in the same bucket. He doesn't understand that we are underneath the bucket. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I played the loser music, man. He needs to hear the loser music. Make a statement that's patently false like that. I'm going to correct you. In love, my brother. All out of love. But I got to correct you on this, brother, because you once again, you're too big. You're too loud. You're too strong. People pay attention to you. 10,000 people watched you say that. Not a, I didn't see anyone correct that shit. They go along with the get along game. You creating your own go along, get along game. <laughs> all right, so with all seriousness, here we go, guys. Black owned small businesses are hit harder by the pandemic than white owned firms. This is just reality. How much, Tim Black? What's the difference here? HR Black Survey of almost 3,000 small businesses found that 53% of black businesses owners saw their revenue drop by half compared to 37 of white small businesses. 53 to 37. That's almost double. When Kwame says, we, I know some black business been hurt, white business been hurt. Let's help everybody. I know that sounds good. Problem is, most of our black businesses that have been hurt won't be coming back, Kwame, because we're undercapitalized. We're underfunded. We have a legacy of being able to, to it's harder for us to get loans. So that means we undercapitalize when we take a hit. Like a pandemic, we are screwed. I know I have a small business. I did not plan the NBA. I'm barely hanging in there. A Main Street Alliance Color of Change poll released in October found that only 40% of black businesses expected to remain open over the ensuing months. Only 40% of us black businesses, black small businesses, even saw themselves staying open. There's no way we could survive this shit. Compared with 46% of, of Asian respondents, 48% of Latinx, and 55% of whites. So, of, so we were least likely to stay open. 40% of black businesses expected to remain open, 46 of Asian, 48 of Latinx, 55 of whites. So the forty percent is low because that's a matter of us that only that even foresaw foresaw us staying open. That means sixty percent did not see themselves staying open. You understand? There's no way they were going to make it through. I went to a restaurant, a great restaurant. I want to take I want to take Mrs. Black to on my day off. I said, let's call, let's call and make sure it's open. It's not an expensive restaurant, but they got good food. Good thing we checked. It's closed. It's gone. Pandemic. I know it sounds good to say we're all in the same boat. We should all, we're all struggling. Everybody's struggling. It's not equal though. Contrary to what you were here on Twitter or on Instagram, most black businesses did not fraudulently get PPP loans. I don't know why this type of shit gets elevated for us, why it gets like circulated, like, oh, all these black people are getting these PPP loans they shouldn't get. That's true. We were last on that list. Just, just know this, Kwame. Here goes a good way to, this is a good rule of thumb. And if you go by this rule of thumb, 95% if not more, if 95 or 98% of the time, you'll be right. 
This is to your Uncle Tim Black. Here it goes. Even when you don't know exactly, you haven't had a chance to research it, you can trust this. We're going to be at the top of everything bad. Any list that's bad, who's dying earliest, right? Who's underfunded, who's brokest, that's us. Now, anything good, we're going to be at the bottom of that. Okay? Who's doing well? Bottom. Who's living longest? Bottom. Who's having the most access to opportunity? Bottom. These are things you can count on. This is why reparations, a word I've never heard you use, this is why reparations is important. And this is why I need you not to go in front of 10,000 people, predominantly black people, and tell them that us and white people are the same and we all struggling, we all struggling the same, so, you know. It's not true. If I wish it were true. I wish none of, nobody had to struggle. The Irish... Black family is worth 10% of the average white family. Okay? There's liars, too, on the le- uh, the so-called left who lie to. Okay? They make up shit. They want black people to go away. They want us to disintegrate. They want the conversation to be just about money for their, for their libertarian friends. Okay? Check out the Reset Podcast. Okay? Actify Press for more information. Since the beginning of the pandemic... 400,000, 400,000 small businesses have closed and millions more are hanging on by a thread. Biden said at a White House briefing, it's hurting black, Latino, and Asian communities the hardest. And we're hurt the hardest of the hardest. My thing is this, Kwame Brown's name is blowing up. He's doing big things. He's got a lot of attention. I just want him to get shit right. And we could disagree on some of his guests, disagree on some of his points of view, some of his shit. I, I, but I think his politics is going to continue to, to show itself. You know? And some of it I don't agree with. That's fine, man. But at the end of the day, I'm glad somebody's calling out the hypocrisies and the corruption. I don't have to agree with everything to point out a couple of things I think should be better or a couple of things I have an issue with. That's just the whole point, Right? That's the whole point of commentary. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't want to tear them down, you know? But, dog, when you start saying black people and white people got it the same and they're both struggling, nah, dog, it's not the same, man. It's not even in the same ballpark, man. Like, we're so far behind, man, it's horrific. You know, if, if white people were doing as bad as black people are doing, there wouldn't be no more America, man. They set this shit on fire. That's the shit no one talks about. If white women were dying like black women, the world would stop. If white men were in jail at the same percentage as black men, there'd be a revolution tomorrow. If their babies were under living under poverty as much as our percentage-wise, based on black families, man, this shit be over, man. White people be in the streets right now. I mean, shit, they ride when they win a ball game. Come on, man. Come on, Johnson. So, <laughs> you know, these people, like, I like my real white folks, like, I got some white folks in West Virginia. I got some white folks from some places. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Not the candy-ass liberal white folks. I'm talking about, I got some, some, some real white folks. You know, white folks with guns, you know, that, that know, like, like, they know what I'm talking about. And they know damn well what I'm saying, and they relate to it. That if America was treating them like they treat us for real, for real, shit, it'd be over, man. Don't listen to these goofy assholes trying to kumbaya us. Like, like it's the same. It's not the same, man. It's not the same. And hopefully, hopefully, some of those pissed off white folks and some of us black folks or all us black folks can get together and change this shit and stick our, you know, stick our foot in the government's ass. And make them change this shit, because that's the only hope we got. But stop talking like we the same. We ain't the same. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing the same. Uh-uh, we're not doing the same, man. The debt alone, bro. Look, I'm going to quote my folks from the Reset Race podcast, because they were around me to keep saying this. A black college graduate 
has less wealth than an average white high school dropout. That's why when people push back about the student loan shit, there'll be black people pissed off saying, don't say that shit. Don't talk about white nationalism. That's nice. We want to wipe it out. But first, let's do some reparations because we don't benefit from those degrees like you think we do. We're still dealing with a, a racist country that doesn't hire us the same. They don't pay us the same. Our degrees aren't worth as much. You're talking about income. We're talking about wealth. We're talking about what people got in the bank, dog. Not their, not their salary, at their job, Johnson. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go next call, man. Thank you for your patience. But Snelly got me on one because he talked about some stuff that uh, I felt like I needed to talk about. 